Welcome to the Introduction to Conducting a Systematic Review workshop. This workshop and a series of videos will go over the definition for a systematic review, identify systematic review types and differences in methods, go over the process for creating a systematic review question, the systematic review protocol, including how to design a protocol that will help you maximize your review efficiency, and go through the steps involved in the systematic review process, including searching, screening, and data extraction. This workshop also includes recommended tools and resources that are accessible on the Health Sciences Library website. First, we will look at the different types of systematic reviews. The Cochrane Handbook for Systematic Reviews includes a definition that lays out how systematic reviews are different from other types of literature reviews. First, a systematic review is designed to gather all of the evidence that answers a particular question and your preset eligibility criteria. So rather than a narrative review, which only gathers some of the literature or other types of reviews that again, only cherry pick the evidence in order to quickly um, provide examples that meet certain points or answer a hypothesis, a systematic review goes through all of the evidence that is available in order to then answer the research question. It also uses strict methodology in order to minimize other types of bias in the resulting publications with the goal of having a reliable, high quality publication um, from which others can make conclusions and decisions. When you look across the types of literature reviews, then there are non-systematic reviews, such as narrative reviews, and then there are a range of reviews that fall under the umbrella of systematic reviews. This includes systematized reviews, which may only follow some of the systematic review steps, um, rapid reviews and scoping reviews, which have similar um, guidelines and steps to systematic reviews, but are conducted for different purposes. Um, systematic reviews themselves, um, meta-analyses, which are systematic reviews that also include a quantitative analysis of the data from the included studies, and reviews of other literature reviews, including reviews of systematic reviews. To compare more closely between types of reviews that often get confused for one another, or to help you determine which type of review best meets your needs, um, I've created a comparison here between systematic reviews, scoping reviews, and systematized reviews. The first difference between systematized reviews and systematic or scoping reviews is the purpose of the project. Systematized reviews are generally conducted by students for an assignment, a thesis, or dissertation, and then maybe secondarily for publication. Um, and this is because as you look at the other requirements for systematized reviews, you're generally not doing a protocol, and it's, it couldn't be either a team-based or an individual project, but it's usually an individual project that only follows those steps of a systematic review, which can be completed um, by one person in what is usually a limited time frame. While systematic reviews and scoping reviews are usually conducted with a team, primarily for publication as an article. The difference between systematic reviews and scoping reviews comes down to the purpose of the project. Scoping reviews have a broad research question and broad inclusion exclusion criteria because they're designed as an initial stage review to get a sense of how much literature is available on a certain topic, what the literature might say, what gaps there are in the literature to then build on with future original research. Well, systematic reviews have a very focused and specific research question and criteria in order to find and assess the literature that's going to answer that specific question. 
Because of this difference in purpose, you generally need a larger team to effectively conduct a systematic review as compared to a scoping review, although you can have a larger team for a scoping review if you think that will make the process easier. So focusing specifically on systematic reviews, the process follows this flowchart. First, you will determine the need for the systematic review um, and prepare for the review by gathering background information and um, putting together your research team. As you um, investigate the need for the review, you will also then start to think about the que review question, scope, your criteria, and build and finalize that into the review protocol. You will then create a comprehensive literature search to find the studies that will be evaluated for inclusion in the review through the screening process. Once the included studies have been determined through screening, you will extract data from those studies, assess the quality um, or the risk of bias in those studies, and then complete your evidence synthesis in the manuscript and then finally, once your review is complete with the synthesis and the reporting of your review methods, you will share the review um, through the journal article publication process. This workshop will focus specifically on designing a review question, establishing the scope of your review through a review protocol, the literature search process for a systematic review, and the screening steps for systematic reviews. Um, additional information for the other steps of the systematic review process and on these steps is available in the HSL Guide to Systematic Reviews on the HSL website. This is the end of the first section of the systematic review workshop. The next section will go into review questions.